Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh my gosh, Hugh actually got the intro music at the intro. <laughs> Sometimes we get it right. <laughs> Flying squirrel, yeah. Blind squirrel. Um, so, <laughs> morning, Joe Andrick. We were in your neck of the woods just the other day. Uh, we waved when we passed by where you work. <laughs> you pointed it out. So um, today's massage day. It's like the best day of the month. So Hugh, Hugh's getting his this morning. I'm getting mine this afternoon. So yay, TGIF. And my goal today is to work on my speech for, I know Hugh talked about it on Wednesday, my speech for Super Zoo. Um, because... Uh, yeah, it's a little nerve-wracking. But anyway, um, I enjoy speaking, so it'll be fun when I when I finally get it all put together. So, oh my gosh. Last night was one of those nights where the dogs had Hugh up probably no less than 65 times. I don't think he got more than an hour of sleep. It was bad. I don't know what their issue was. And I have to say, Hugh and I have had a really, really fun week. We, um, It's funny, he went to a pulmonologist yesterday, and the nurse that was working with him... When she was taking down his stats, she asked his birthday, and she said, oh my gosh, that's my birthday too. And then she looked at him and said, so do you find that you're kind of a home buddy? Like you'd really like to just kind of hunker down at home. And he's like, yeah, actually, that's kind of how we are. My And she says, I think it's because we're cancers. And he said, well, my wife's a cancer too, and she's the same way. Like, we just, you know, we hunker down, and we don't go out much. And, you know, other than things where we have to go to meetings or presentations, we just kind of hunker down. And this week, we have been out to dinner with friends Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. And I get a little anxious, a little bit of social anxiety about the plans and knowing we have to go. And, you know, it was like we're getting out of the car in the parking lot. I'm like, oh, gosh. You know, I get like anxious about it, like, you know, dreading lulls in the conversation and what if, you know, what if, what, I don't know, whatever, you know, because believe it or not, I'm actually a shy person. So uh, I have to say we've had more fun this week. Like every dinner that we went to was just fun on top of fun with really great people. And so um I wrote in my journal this morning that I just have to give up the social anxiety because when we do it, it's really fun and we have a great time. But it's really funny because the person that at uh, his uh, pulmonologist, she said, yeah, I'd really like to just spend the rest of my life in an RV just traveling around by myself. And he was like, hello. <laughs> it's like our dream goal. So it's pretty funny. So I don't know for, you know, others of you out there that might be cancers. Hey, Penny. Um, you know, are you the same way? Like, is that a cancer thing or is that, you know, I don't know. Is it an age related? Thing? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so I, I got, um, a pet bulletin this morning and it was talking about a new pet food that's, uh, like dog pro 89 or something. I'm not going to tell you the 
company that makes it, but the 89 stands for, it's a dry food, stands for 89% of the protein in the product comes from meat protein and not uh, plant proteins. And so that's one of those things that um, we are duped into thinking that we are buying products that are high meat, we're buying products that are high protein, and that all of that protein is coming from meat. And when you look at dry kibbles, it's very hard to have high meat diets because it just, it you know, especially after going to Kansas last year and seeing how dry food is made, it just doesn't work in the thing that's called an extruder. There are some baked uh, dry food products on the market. Maybe they can be a little bit higher in meat. I haven't seen how the baking process goes on, but um, in order to make kibble stick as a kibble, it pretty much needs to have a lot of plant protein or plant uh, product in there. So, um, uh, I brought up two pet foods this morning to look at their ingredients, and both of these are dry kibbles that are 30% protein. And by the way, one of these is one that a lot of people are going back to because of the whole DCM with grain-free diet debacle, um, which let me tell you, I think there's a lot of collusion, a lot of scam going on with that whole thing, and um, I've done some morning talks and written quite a few blogs on the DCM thing. We can we can do it again. We can do it ad nauseum. Um, but one of the things is that uh, there are no answers. We don't have answers. We have a lot of suspicions. We don't have answers. So for anyone, including that doctor at Tufts, to say, this is the cause of the DCM. We know exactly for sure that these diets are causing a problem. That is, I call bullshit. It is crap because nobody has the answers nobody knows there hasn't been enough research there are, we you know we've had 500 cases of DCM reported and then they looked at the diets that those dogs were eating and I've seen it in cats as well but it is more common in kitty cats with uh, grain based diets um, some of the dogs are taurine deficient, some of them aren't taurine deficient, and the vast majority of them are golden retrievers. And there's only 500 cases. Now, if we think that there's a, think about the fact that there's 180 million dogs and cats in this country alone, and we have 500 cases, it's a really, really, really tiny percentage. So is it a genetic problem with uh, goldens and certain other pets that we're seeing this in? Is it truly a diet-related problem? Some of them are taurine deficient, some of them aren't. So for those who are not taurine deficient, is it really a diet-related problem? Nobody knows. There needs to be a ton more research. Of course, if we wait for the FDA, they can spend 12 years researching it and then at the end go, well, we don't have a solution, but we're just saying that we're done with it, so we're not going to investigate it anymore anyway. So we, we may never get a solution. We may get a resolution, but not a solution. You can read my blogs about AFCO from last week uh, if you want more information about that. But anyway, so this one diet that I brought up, 30% crude protein. First ingredient's chicken. And we all go, yay, it's a high meat diet. Oh, but wait a minute. They're using whole chicken, which means they're counting the water weight as well. So if we dehydrate that chicken down, the actual amount of chicken meat minus the water is and their next ingredient is corn gluten meal the next is brewer's rice then animal fat then we get to poultry byproduct meal now this is the diet that they're recommending that everybody go back to not so good and millions of people are going back to this and they're walking into these independent pet stores and saying i want to buy this food and the independent retailers are going we don't stock that that's crappy food and they're losing business because people are turning around and going to the big box stores and saying, I want this food because a certain veterinarian at a certain institution is saying, oh, no, we need to go back to this made by the big companies. Ugh. So most protein in this product, a little bit of it is coming from the chicken and a little bit of cut is coming from the poultry byproduct meal, which is way down there at ingredient number five under, <clears throat> under animal fat. So how much fat can you really put in a food and not have it be totally rancid? So even the poultry byproduct meal is a very small percentage of this. Most of the protein in this diet is coming from corn gluten meal. There is no taurine, there is no carnitine in corn gluten meal. 
There's taurine and carnitine in chicken and poultry byproduct. Now, taurine can be synthesized in the body by dogs, not cats, using cysteine and methionine, which are two other amino acids. So if we have those two amino acids in high quantity, they can combine together to make the taurine that needs, needs to be uh, formed. The problem with the legumes, when we look at the um, grain-free diets, they're not high enough in cysteine and methionine to make the taurine. So that's one of the things that's going on. But remember, some of those dogs do not have low taurine. So still leaves questions. So this new 89 diet has as its first ingredients beef, pork, beef meal, then grain sorghum, whole grain brown rice, then the chicken fat, then we have millet, then fish meal, dried beet pulp, flaxseed, quinoa, chia seed. So there's a lot of grain-based products in here as well. They do have beef, remember, with water, pork with water, then beef meal, which has had the water taken out. So is this a higher meat product? Absolutely. And that's why they can say they're getting 89% of their protein from meat. It is a higher meat product, but overall, I can tell you that this product still is no more than probably max 30% meat, 70% non-meat products in there. So you're still not getting a high meat product if you're buying a dry kibble. And so that, that leaves us with, you know, could this still lead to heart problems because it's low in taurine and carnitine? It could. Have we consistently seen that in the past in breeds that are not prone to dilated cardiomyopathy? Because we do have certain breeds, Dobermans, Great Danes, Boxers. They're prone to dilated cardiomyopathy genetically. And part of my question is, are we now seeing genetically prone golden retrievers? And I suspect that through breeding practices, perhaps we are. And perhaps this is kind of the new normal for this breed and maybe we need to be looking at the genetics of these dogs that are showing with dilated cardiomyopathy. A lot of them are younger to middle-aged, which tends to be where it shows up genetically, the Dobermans, the Boxers, the Danes, uh, some Greyhounds. We can see these problems as early as four to five years of age. So, um, you know, for anybody with these um with these breeds that are prone to those problems, you better be getting in for those uh, annual or semi-annual checkups. Even when they're young, you need to be getting their chest listened to and you need to be doing that annual blood work. Uh, you can do, there's a test called ProBNP offered by Antec Labs, or even just looking at a CPK, which is creatinine phosphokinase. Um, I think that's it. Creatine creatine kinase, um, CPK, uh, that will start to elevate if we have a muscle problem. The heart is a muscle. So if that is elevated, then perhaps you need to be looking more closely at heart problems. Uh, supporters, I think we'll put something together for uh, an evening thing today. Martinis with Myra tonight. So yes, and then we have the stupid vegetarian food with no meat content at all. And we have some veterinarians promoting vegetarian diets. I understand that vegetarian diets will help save our planet, but I still don't think they're appropriate, particularly for cats, but even for our dogs. You need to do a lot of supplementation if you want to use vegetarian diets. A lot, a lot. And there are a million ways to save our planet. That's another whole discussion. Okay, honey, give us some music. See, see if we can get exit music and not beginning music. How about testing for taurine levels? Yeah, absolutely. You got golden retrievers, you should be testing. Particularly if they've been on dry kibble. But we're getting low taurine levels even in uh, raw fed goldens. We're, we're just, I think there's a, I think there's a golden problem. I don't think there's a golden heart study yet. Wish there would be. <laughs> yeah, Neely, I agree. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my gosh, Jane, that's terrible. Yeah, their bets are saying Purina Pro Plan. That's whose ingredients I read you with all that corn. Not good, not good.